Welcome to the Bender Boys Podcast, episode three. I'm here with my buddy Garrett. You know what I noticed we didn't do uh, last time? We didn't introduce ourselves on either episode. I don't think we've, no one knows. I mean, we haven't put it down at the bottom either, so um, we'll do that real quick. My name's Caleb Hill. Um, I kind of started Bender Boys back in July of last year, and this is my buddy Garrett. I am um, Garrett Rogers. Yeah. I Now I'm like a honorary Bender Boy partner kind of thing. <laughs> so, um... Silent partner, of course. Silent partner, yeah. yeah. Welcome back to the Bender Boys podcast. Um, episode one and two are out. Yeah, they get better every time. Yeah, honestly. like two was was really good. one. Yeah, the first we one. Learning. So we've we've run into some problems. Um, if you've watched, you have seen the problems. But uh, on the first episode, we filmed it vertically, so that, that was, was a rookie mistake. That was tough, yeah. But we wanted to, we didn't want to re-record because yeah. then it wouldn't have been the same. It'd have been almost Not staged. Yeah. yeah. And then the second one, my phone storage filled up. Yep. And so we have about half the video footage. And then also in both of them, we had this whole left-right audio thing with the two mics, which we fixed. We did some research, a.k.a. YouTube, and found some tutorials, and we figured out how to get this thing. So every episode, we're getting slightly more professional. Yeah, right yeah, there. slowly better. Yeah, We still are in uh, Studio One at yeah. Caleb's residence. Yeah. <laughs> um. With our wonderful background, go check out the t-shirts on the BenderBoys.com. We also have these head covers here, um, towels, flags are coming soon. Yeah. The shirts are very soft. They do shrink a little bit, so if you're in between sizes, size up. But they're very soft. They fit good. They make the arms look buff, and that's what's important. Yeah. All right. Well, let's jump into it. Um, I think the... Topic for this episode mostly is going to be full swing. Yeah, the new documentary. We will probably spoil some stuff. Although the biggest spoilers in there are like who wins the tournaments, which these all happened last year. So if we spoil who won a tournament for you, then like shame on you for not you know watching it or for you know pretending like you care now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. I thought it was good. Um, I feel like yeah, we definitely might spoil some episodes but not too bad i think we could no, probably no. keep it pretty good just talking about you know what we liked and everything like that yeah. but um no it was interesting to see um kind of into the background of the pga lifestyle and, and things like that um you know kind of got some newfound respect for certain players yes some yes. you know new players that i'm going to pay more attention to now which I think is ultimately the goal of what they were trying to do is to yeah. get people more involved. Yeah, Joel Damon might be my new favorite golfer. I know, dude. Like, I love Everybody him. loves him now. I he's love a fan him. favorite. He's, he's a fan favorite. I mean, we always knew Tony Finau was was you know a good guy and all that stuff, but to like that episode almost made me cry. Like, yeah. you know, So like <laughs> we're, we're gonna get into each episode individually. Yeah. But, like, even Joel Damon's almost made. It, yeah, like, yeah, it yeah. Like his story with like cancer and stuff. Like, yeah, I mean uh, that's and his wife and like how just supportive they are of each other. It it was phenomenal. Yeah. But, but episode one, yeah, episode one was the the Jordan and um, Justin Thomas duo growing up. So never knew that they were like that close of friends. You know, shame on me for not knowing golf that much. I knew they're friends now, but I didn't know they were friends. Yeah, I didn't realize that they grew up yeah. together, kind of playing in tournaments and stuff like that. Which yes. you, you know, I guess you don't really realize where everybody comes from, um, you know, until they do these documentaries and things like that. But yeah, it was cool seeing how Jordan and JT have basically been. Uh, competing against each other forever, and they just, you know... Since, like, I know college, or maybe even high school. Like yeah. Like high school prospects. Yeah, and then I thought it was cool how, um, you know, Jordan jumped out on the PGA Tour and had all this success starting off yeah. and then started to struggle a little bit, and JT kind of took the, the head on all that. I mean, JT is the one that's, like, in the in it right now yeah you know? yeah I mean, jt's I mean, in his prime i guess or or maybe getting to his prime yeah i think speed was a couple years ahead yeah um, and so i thought it was interesting how you know jordan started out had all this success jt's sitting there watching him you know wanting to have that success yeah. and then ends up reaching that and now jordan's trying to get back to that which he had a good year last year you know starting to f figure out some things with his swing which let's take a moment to talk about his pre-shot routine like what is he doing when he does that i don't know i think like it's tough because i, I want to 
you know, bash people's pre-shot routines or like their swing mechanics or whatever. But I have no pre-shot routine. You yeah, know, my that's mechanics true. are terrible. <laughs> so like, I'm just like, uh, you know, if they got to that level and they can do it, then like whatever. But you know, I don't know. There's some odd stuff that some of the, all the guys on tour do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I think a lot of it now though is just like not not have it, but like they, it's like a bad juju if they don't do it you know like yeah. they, they, like they've always done it that way and so now they're just always going to continue to do it that way yeah he um he kind of he does this weird thing where he like he picks up his club and it, it almost looks like he's setting himself up to hit like this insane slice yeah. and then he goes into his shot i don't know if it's like a feel thing for him or what he's doing now but um you know hopefully it continues to work for him um I think I I definitely you know JT is my favorite golfer so um, you know I always had respect for him and everything that he he does for the game and stuff like that but seeing I thought it was cool too how they do like the money games on their uh, yeah, practice rounds and stuff together. like that yeah yeah I didn't even know that I mean yeah. obviously you know you realize that they're more and more like you know normal people or whatever which yeah. uh, everybody except for the fact that they took a private jet to go play that course yeah. for the day like <laughs> took a day trip to florida or whatever to yeah for the play. practice yeah for the practice round they're like back, yeah so. and then they just flew back we use the term normal people pretty yeah. loosely here yeah so. i don't know if uh i don't know if we could take a private jet to no, go get a practice no, round then no. before the weekend we'll take my private car that i own like <laughs> yeah so yeah i think that was interesting seeing them how close of friends they are um and how, you know, friends off the course. And then, you know, that's kind of a theme throughout the whole full swing uh, documentary is, you know, how close some of these players are to other players. Yeah, the clicks and, and stuff that do. are on the PGA yeah, Tour. Yeah, how they're kind of clicky, which, you know, you come back to with the um, with the guys in, I think it's episode like six or seven, um, like Neiman and them who are really good friends. So that yeah. kind of thing. But um, episode two, yeah, win or go home. Uh, Brooks Kepka talks about like how he's pretty much obsessed with golf yeah um and he like can't stop thinking about it that kind of thing so he's like the he to me like i feel like when someone watches that episode he is what like you think a professional athlete is like you know like he has a super nice house the pretty wife you know like the like he had like frosted tips or something and this yeah. you know like he just he just gives off like that celebrity athlete vibe yeah. you know yeah. and so I think like that is one where when someone who doesn't know golf watches that they're going to be like, wow, these guys like act like professional athletes and stuff mm -hmm. like in a good way. I mean, Bruce Kepka, like it's kind of sad, though, because like he's not exactly happy with how obsessed he is. Like he knows that like, you know, he's sitting there and there's like a scene where he's like talking to his wife about outfits or something or his fiance or. Yeah, I think they're married now. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, you know, talking to her about like outfits and stuff and like, you know, he's overdubbing the video like from an interview where he's just like yeah like all i think about is golf yeah like even talking it's starting to, his, to affect yeah. his home life and stuff yeah. like that because he, he was struggling separate. and he can't figure out what's going on and um yeah i mean it, i guess it kind of speaks to the fact about how they have to find a good balance yeah and even they struggle with you know all the stuff that you know we might give them crap when we're watching the watching the events or uh at the events you know talking smack but um you know these guys are this is their life they're yeah. competitors yeah. and so it's their livelihood yeah you know? i mean like you know like we think about getting better at what we do for work like you know putting in some effort outside of work to be like okay i want to you know maybe learn a little bit more or practice a skill or whatever you do for your work you know these guys like you know if they're not actively on the course they're thinking about it and stuff you know yeah. i mean i think about golf on days that i golf <laughs> yeah but on days i don't golf i mean yeah i watch golf i do all that but i'm not like going through like you know swing mechanics in my head and like you know how i want to you know time stuff like i'm not thinking that detailed not on a day that i golf you know what yeah. I'm saying? Like, like i'm not sitting at work thinking about my swing mechanics yeah like, yeah for sure who who was the um the other guy in that episode it was Brooks Scheffler, and but they Brooks and Scheffler. I mean, they talked about Scheffler a little bit. But yeah, I just I thought Scheffler's it was I thought coming. it was funny how um, there's a couple memes about it. Uh, like uh, Bri oh. or Brooks was ooh, Bryce and Brooks. Really? I heard they squashed really? the beef. Really? Yeah, yeah. I just saw it. Um, apparently, they squashed the beef there. Uh, talking on a every other day basis is what the that's weird is what the news article said. So that's weird. Um, that's just a weird thing. Like thing to say anyway side note uh yeah. but <laughs> ADD. <laughs> um but yeah so it was funny there's a couple of memes about how brooks uh was like the dark cloud with the rain and scotty was the you know yeah, sunshine the rainbows yeah. like 
he is just I mean last year the way that he was playing was just crazy unbelievable yeah. and you know he freaking won the waste management last time we were yeah. we did the podcast it yeah we were like I remember we we were sitting there we were like Scotty hasn't really been playing like he didn't play the greatest in the first two tournaments and so I guess we were like oh, okay his runs over yeah but then he went back to back at waste management so I mean he's still up there uh brooks is i guess figuring things out on the the live because yeah you know he went he he went over which to live so this is a great segue in episode three by Ooh, the way episode three. which was money or legacy was the title of it which talks that's like the first introduction of live golf is this the one with ian poulter um, yes yeah poulter's in it and um see i'm, I'm kind of looking up a summary here I'm, I'm cheating um but yeah i think it actually is just um poulter like you know, golf player wise, I mean, they follow. I think they did a little bit with Rory, um, but Rory comes in later. So yeah, Ian Poulter talking about like the money legacy, and I remember like when they talked about it, like he wouldn't really answer, and like they kind of hinted at it. And now that we see the documentary, it's like you can tell the whole time Ian was probably you know like he he was pretty set on going. You know, even when they first mentioned it to him. Yeah, well, um, he always. I mean, he always seemed like kind of a douchebag, kind of you know. I'm better than, than yeah, you kind of yeah, mentality. Percent. And yeah. I, I don't know if that's his, if that's how he actually is, but that's kind of the, what he puts off. And, yeah. um, I remember I saw like a video, uh, last year he was in some tournament. I can't remember which one, but he got like a bad ruling from a PGA official. Oh yeah. And he was like, I can't wait to be off this tour. And so like, I, I, I don't know if that was like the last straw or if there was something building up to that, but we all kind of knew he was going to go if yeah. they offered him the money and the fact that they did. yeah the fact that they um offered it to him i think i can see where where all these guys that went to live i can see where they're coming from um you know not really being a part of the PGA and all that stuff i i can understand like their argument is that they're just doing it to take care of their family and yeah. You know, it's guaranteed money, which is different from the PGA where you got to be competitive. Yeah. But then it's like, okay, you're taking the easy way out, you know? But yeah. I mean, I think this is also good for us to kind of give our opinion on Liv, which is a pretty hot topic. But, yeah. you know, uh, I don't know. I think my opinion on Liv, I don't think it's sustainable, mainly because of that payment model. I mean, we can get into the morals of who supports it and stuff like that, but that's not, like, our place. I don't think we should ever talk about that <laughs> yeah. on the podcast. But, like... You know, just from a like, r just the idea of a rival golf league at the professional level. So obviously, we're not counting like Corn Ferry Tour as the you know Bush League of yeah, yeah. you know PGA. Like th th that makes sense to have some stepping stones. But why? I mean, I think the more sustainable model is to keep it all within the same like you know major league, minor league thing in the same company, but have it where you know you can get promoted, demoted, just like in you know baseball and all these other sports that have yeah. you know, like lower. Um, like, you know, double A, triple A kind of stuff. I, I don't know. I, I get, you know, chasing the money, and I think Liv's exciting, but I think you can do that with anything can be, you know, a more exciting event, you know. That yeah. just takes some better event planning. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think I think that there's pros and cons to it, but, you know, to be the devil's advocate here, look at the difference in the PGA this year versus what it was in the past, you know, 25 yeah. years. This one company shows up, and starts guaranteeing and money, yeah. and you know shakes the shakes the boat a little bit, and all of a sudden the purses are you know there's like four or five tournaments with twenty plus million dollar purses now, which is the way never it been, been. That, yeah the yeah. way that should have been, and I think it kind of exposed a few things in the PGA that uh, you know everybody had probably been saying for a while, but they kind of just were like, well, we can't Whatever. do anything about yeah. it. Like, yeah. um, and so, you know, they were talking about it. Uh, I saw in the, in the last episode, uh, which we'll get to, but, um, Rory was talking about how the guy came out, um, the head of the PGA, I can't remember his name, but, um, he came out and said that there's going to be a certain amount of tournaments that are required to play in. And then those purses are going to be, you know, boosted or whatever. Potentially more, yeah. But, uh, but there's never been a requirement for the tour players to play in, you know, five tournaments or something like that. Yeah. So Rory was saying how 
okay, you know, he was talking to the guys because they it caught him off guard. It's like, oh, we've never been required to play, yeah. but um, but Rory was like, we're the only professional athletes that aren't required to show up every, every week game. and play, yeah. and you know, we can pick and choose which tournaments we want to play in, and you know, we can go and get our points for you know whatever whenever we feel like it. Yeah. And so he's like, okay, you know, take it for what it's worth. Like, look at what we're getting in exchange for yeah, the required. Yeah, I think you should have to play a certain number. I mean, that's. Yeah, I, I mean, I think it it's good. It also keeps PGA exciting. That was the whole point of the live is that these guys are competing and, like, it. the star players are what makes the tour money. So yeah. if you require these star players to, like, actually play. Like, look at the events like Genesis and stuff where Tiger shows up. It makes, I don't know the numbers. I can probably Google it and figure it out. But, like. They, oh, they it's make insane. way more money it's when Tiger's insane. there. So why would you not want Rory, JT? Why would you not want all these guys playing at these bigger events that like can host more people, which means you can sell more tickets, which means you can sell more expensive tickets. Like it's it's so much money they can make. Yeah. Right? And if you want to make more money as a player, the tour has to make money. Mm -hmm. You know, it's it's the same thing in like any job. Like if you want, you know, to get paid more money, then your company needs to make more money. Yeah. And like I know some companies corrupt, blah 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 and pocket the money. But like if you're not making your company money, then you don't deserve a raise. And yeah. It's the same thing in professional sports. If you aren't helping your team win, if you aren't helping the tour make money, then you don't deserve more money. Like, you know, you, yeah. you get what you bring in, you yeah. know? And so Tiger brings in a lot of viewers. Tiger, people who don't even know golf want to watch yeah. the tournaments. You well, know? that that was a um, – not to get into the conspiracy theories or anything. Oh, yeah, but with them. <laughs> but apparently uh, there's this conspiracy theory that a couple of the guys that were – um, above the cut line, got paid. Might have might have hit a hit a bad shot here and there, yeah. so that they boosted that cut line down. Got a little down. 10, 20 grand so, check. Yeah, so yeah. Tiger could make it to the weekend, and yeah. and that that money that they bring in. I mean, the people that you know, Tiger is plus one, or he what did he finish? Like Evenish, or he finished like one under, I think. Something I, I can't remember what he finished at, yeah. but uh he finished decent but nowhere near the the leader yeah. and there's more people watching him than there are watching the leader yep. and uh, you know it's just that's just what tiger and those big guys big name guys do to the game and i think um yeah i i can't remember how many tournaments it was where all the big names go and compete against each other but you know for example this week the honda classic there's no big name yeah. guys there and I can't imagine the difference in the views that yeah. they're getting. You know? Like Billy Horschel is the one. In yeah. The, like, I don't even know if he's still in the league. I watched <laughs> yesterday Billy Horschel was up there. Yeah. And M was in there. You know, I mean, like, those are people that we know. But Yeah, I mean, there's some big names and some, Carson you Young know, younger guys that are trying to make a name for themselves. But, um, you know, those big name guys like Tiger, JT, Spieth, they're all preparing for the, you know, the players, yeah. the – the Masters, the RBC Heritage, they're taking a week off after this, yeah. uh, you know, West Coast run, yeah, and and waiting, waiting for these bigger, prepped. bigger tournaments. So, yeah. So episode four, imposter syndrome. This is the Joel Damon episode. Uh, Love that. Yeah. Love Joel Damon. Um, think he's an amazing person. Had never even heard of him before this, to be honest. Yeah, and then like his wife being super supportive. They just seem like a normal couple. I mean, I say that like he struggled a lot because of it. Um, good friends with his caddy and stuff. Um, yeah, his caddy was like his best friend. And, yeah. Um, he called him. Was like, hey, uh, he. I think his caddy called him. And was like, I want a caddy for you. He he sent an application. Oh yeah, sent the application. <laughs> yes, I yeah. remember. Yeah. Yeah, he sent the application in because like. The whole, uh, basically the whole time on the Joel Damon episode, it's him talking about how he's not that good. Yeah, he's like somebody's he's never going to be, he's never going to be JT. He's never going to be Tiger. He's never going to be Rory. But, um, you know, everybody's sitting there in the background being like, dude, yeah, you you're can. actually, you're actually really good. Yeah. And, um, and whether that holds him back to think like that. Yeah. And, and I he think he does get locked in when he's you know doing well yeah and what what was he talking about he said after he had cancer and you know everything cleared up that he kind of realized like oh you know uh, uh, everything's not guaranteed like i need to yeah. stop taking it for granted and yeah um and he it kind of pushed him to you know value everything that he had more yeah 
Yep, yep. So yeah, I love that. And then they talked about the whole, you know, taking his shirt off at uh, Phoenix Open and stuff. Oh yeah. And he's like, apparently that's found upon on a golf course, <laughs> which makes sense. Like that was so funny. Yeah, him and Harry Higgs are, yeah. are crazy, dude. Yeah. They they did that little uh, Tito special with Bob Does Sports. Oh yeah, we talked. Um, I haven't I seen it, but you yeah, told I was me about telling that. you about yeah. it. Yeah, and um, it was it was cool to see him. Like they're just out there having fun. It was like a par three course that they set up, and yeah. um, you know, they're just out there just cracking jokes and talking crap and everything. I love it. And, I love yeah, so it, it's cool to see these guys kind of let loose a little bit more than the you know the old time PGA where it's like, oh, don't be loud on the yeah. course. You, you know, know that you, you of like when Ricky first wore like a flat bill and everyone lost their mind because yeah. he had like an orange Puma flat bill on and they yeah. were like, flat bills on the tour. Like, yeah, that's no. the whole thing is you know these these tournaments. If you if you find a way to make it fun and and yeah. get people more involved and find a way to make golf yeah. entertaining for the average person that yeah. doesn't understand really what's going on, yeah. then it's going to create a whole nother group of, you know, of fans. Yeah. Like are, you have the golfers who like barely ever golf and just go there to like drink and have fun with their friends. And yeah. if you make the events more like that, you can bring that. Like, I know you don't want to bring a trashy crowd. It is a classy sport, blah, 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 blah. But like you can make it more of like a, no, like on hole, whatever is the party hole. And yeah. like that's the one that we get like, you know, you can drink. We have a bar there, that kind of thing, yeah, and like the like rest, you know. Yeah, like you're not gonna walk the course, and you know, like some of the people who aren't as big into golf, but we can have a party there. You know, like they'll play music whenever the players aren't hitting. You know, mm-hmm. something like that. Like yeah. make it a little, a little more fun. Yeah. So. Was next one was American Dreams. That was the DJ and Matt Fitzpatrick episode. Okay. So I thought, like, obviously, you know, it's cool to you know hear about you know Dustin Johnson and stuff like that. Um, you know, with Live Golf and all that kind of stuff, which we kind of knew. He was one of the poster childs for Live Golf, I felt yeah. like. You know, obviously Phil and stuff. But D- Dustin Johnson was, like, one of the few handful of guys who, like, would still be winning tournaments on the tour. Yeah. Consistently. Well, he went on, like, a – he went on a run like Scotty did. Yeah. Um, before Scotty. And then I think he kind of started, you know, getting back to reality <laughs> yeah, yeah. He, he lost that edge or whatever you know the luck that he had yeah. for that year and i think he was like all right i hit my peak and i'm out yeah i'm taking yeah. the money and running and yeah and then matt fitzpatrick matt fitzpatrick with all of his uh you know like keeping stats and stuff even on the range yeah like, that was that's crazy absurd, he was dude. like he has uh stats for seven thousand plus shots that he's hit yeah, ever like, since like he every range shot he's keeping track of like he he yeah. knows and Big stats guy. I, I guess. guess that helps him. I don't know. Matty Fitz. Yeah, that's that's another guy that like I n- had heard the name, but I didn't know much about. Yeah. Um, prior to this documentary, episode six. Don't get bitter, get better. Um, that's the Tony Finau episode. Oh, so that's it. Also mentions Colin. Uh, mentions uh, Colin Morikawa. Yeah, for like you know. ten seconds. Yeah, <laughs> but it just because you know, I mean, Colin. It was cool to like you know, Colin and like seeing him like when he went in with that like meeting for the clothes and stuff and was like, no, it's not my style. Like yeah. it was cool like hearing him. I think he has a good sense of style too. But that that was kind of what. It's funny that like the you know the highlights of the Colin Morikawa part are like you know my sponsorships and me getting on the plane and yeah. then the Tony Finau highlights are like. You know, my mom always told me this, and you yeah. know, you're like bawling, crying yeah. because of like it's just so sentimental, and like how golf was for him. That was the one where he hit the golf balls into like the mattress, right? Wasn't that him? Yeah, yeah. yeah he like grew up in like not a great area. He was in like the Midwest somewhere, I think. Yeah, they showed like his uh, his old garage. Yeah, it was like a townhome. Uh, ball marks on the yeah on, on the, the garage door. door. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's just cool. And then, he, you know, his dad, they interviewed his dad because his mom's um, passed away now. And the dad was talking about, you know, we didn't have the money, so we would go to the range, like, maybe once a week and to see sure how it actually looked, yeah, like, see sure how the flight straight. was. Yeah. But, you know, you practice with contact and stuff in the garage with a mattress. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and that's kind of one of those stories where, you know, and a lot of these golfers did this, but they all mentioned, you know, Tiger and how much of a, you know, influence he was and that he, you know, you know, not that necessarily that Tiger came from nothing, but that, like, you know, Tiger was an outsider being black and the first big guy in the sport and that yeah. kind of thing. And, like, wasn't your traditional golfer. Like, Tiger came in and wasn't necessarily, like, you know, the the old guy or, like, you know, my family golf or whatever. Like, yeah. you know, Tiger came in and was like, I'm you gonna know, I'm, I'm going to mess this stuff up. Yeah, I'm yeah. going to go here. I'm here to win. Like, this is what I'm going to do. And, yeah. like, I remember I've seen a video, too, where he said that and the announcer like or the, whoever was interviewing him was like oh you'll learn you'll learn yeah and it's like oh will i and yeah. he like you know it's so yeah. funny because like you know he ends up winning crazy he's tiger yeah. woods I, I think he's the he's, he's the most influential 
we're we're getting on a tiger tangent here, but um, <laughs> he's the most influential athlete of all time. Yeah, influential. Yeah. Um, you know, I mean, and I think I think even like Michael Jordan and stuff have said that because you know, obviously, you know, Michael Jordan's up there, Kobe's up there, mm-hmm. um, LeBron will be up there, unfortunately. Yeah. I'm not a LeBron fan, but you know, yeah. I'm just saying he is inf- influential. But anyway. Sorry. You know, Tiger Woods, yeah, like, these guys are super influential. And to see Tiger still have any impact, despite the, like, you know, moral uh, <laughs> shortcomings he's had at some points in his career, we all do. I mean, not like that, but, you know, <laughs> you know we, we all fall short in some areas. And, unfortunately, you know, he falls short in the, you know, relationship and driving departments. So yeah. you know, Not the greatest driver. Not the greatest driver, yeah. do you think, you know, with the amount of money he has that – he could take some driving he would have a, yeah. Well, he would just have a personal driver that could yeah. drive him and be sober. Yeah. And just. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, yeah, <laughs> we were talking about, <laughs> what were we talking about again? Tony Finau, nice guy. They always wondered if his family was getting in the way. I don't think so. I think there's some positives and negatives. And, like, he just, you know, he knows where his priorities are. He has a good balance. I think that's what he's always talked about is balance. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Um, episode seven, Golf is Hard. That was Thigala and... Pierre Mito. I'm not going to try to pronounce Yeah, which that one was from. interesting, but... <sighs> not much to really talk about there. I mean, I think it was because it was a bunch of... It, it was two rookies. It was so two it's rookies. Like, you so know, we're talking okay, about like, Yeah, like yeah, how, you cool, know, but they're sitting at home watching some of the events because they, like, you know, can't really play them or whatever. Yeah. Um, hearing Mito and Neiman being friends, that was cool. That harks back to the whole, like, JT thing because they grew up in Chile? Yeah, Chile. I Chile. Think. Yeah. Um, but you know the golf community is small. They said they all know each other, which that was cool to see them make it on the tour and all that. And that yeah. how they kind of flip flopped being jealous of each other because like Neiman kind of made it first, but Neiman when he was a child looked up to Mito. Yeah. So that was cool. That, that was a that was a cool thing. So. Yeah. And then episode eight, that was the last episode that yep. I did not watch. And Garrett went home because yeah, he was tired. I was tired. I watched it. Yeah. So you watched it. I'm committed. About Roy McIlroy. Um, talking about the controversy and Tiger. Talked about Tiger. So you give us kind of the highlights of that one then since I don't really know. I knew it was about them. Um, yeah, it was mainly I, I it was mainly it really else. about Rory and, and everything that he was, went through. Was with, that the one where he said, no, he said F you Phil in episode seven. Yeah, no, that was, that that was, was the one. Oh, yeah, so yeah, maybe yeah. I watched like the highlight or something. Yeah, yeah, he was, Um, which I thought was interesting. I Living rent free in yeah. Rory's head. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Rory's so, worried, so, so worried about everything. Yeah, if you're so confident in your PGA Tour, bro. But, um, no, I thought it was cool because they did the whole story about, you know, how he was defending the PGA Tour. He was defending all the guys that stayed um, and that, you know, they did have almost kind of bad blood with the guys who went to live. And then uh, basically, you know, he's talking all this stuff, talking all this smack, saying that it's, you know, unforgivable what they did and blah, 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 blah. And then, you know, he comes back and makes an insane run at the um at the PGA Championship and or mm-hmm. the FedEx Cup. Yeah. And he won his third FedEx Cup, which, you know, again, what a storyline that just happens to happen, yeah. but not to be the conspiracy yeah, theory. How, how but anyways, be? Rory, you know, makes this insane comeback and and uh that was the one that I think Mito lost. Yeah, I think he was up there. Mito's yeah. always been like, you know, like he had a run there where he was like top five. Yeah, in like yeah, it was insane. Uh, we were watching the the episodes and every single tournament that they kept going to, the different episodes, the different players they were covering. Mito was the leader for uh, Thursday and Friday, yeah, and then yeah. it's like he just can't <laughs> close it out on the weekend. <laughs> and um, but anyways, uh, so he basically just talked about that and like, uh, one thing he said was, um, you know, he's loyal to the PGA and and yeah. like I touched on the earlier tradition. about yeah. yeah the tradition and how you know the PGA got them where they're at and you know for them to just kind of take advantage of that and jump off to live yeah you know he had those bad feelings but um but yeah at the end he was talking about how Tiger's like always the first one to text him um and that he'll text you before the last putt drops and like he's always the first one on his phone but yeah i mean overall i thought it was good i hope they do another another season um you know and yeah. cover some different different golfers and you know more things that are coming i i think it would be i mean i love seeing the deep dive into the yeah. the lifestyle of of the players and stuff like that you know the behind the scenes footage that uh, you know, you don't get to see when you're just watching ESPN Plus every week. Overall, I thought it was good. I would give it a nine out of ten. Nine out of ten. I give it an eight out of ten, and I think it's mainly because like 
I get the balance between like you know wanting to show them golfing and at home, but I wish we went a little bit deeper at home. Like like the Tony Finau, the good episodes were the ones that like really like hit like deep issues, and I thought that was cool. Like I think that also would bring in like you know people who don't even like golf. Like yeah. just goes, oh, this guy's a professional golfer. Like if you just knew Tony Finau was a professional golfer and you watched that episode, you would fall in love with Tony Finau. Yeah. Like not even knowing how good yeah, of a golfer a he is fan, or yeah. nothing about his athletes. You would become a fan of Tony Finau just knowing who he is as a person and what he does. Like he just plays golf. Yeah. You know, so like that that's cool. Like I like that. I like the Joel Damon. You know, I like I like those yeah. kind of episodes. Like I know they're good golfers. Like I don't need to see necessarily like all their golf. You know, I'd love to see you know, maybe how they practice or whatever, but they covered a lot of that. Like every episode kind of coincided with a couple tournaments too yeah it was all like i could see less a couple of the tournament. different tournaments yeah. Yeah. yeah i don't need to see all the tournament like I, I i like seeing the tournaments as in like you know the guys walking up and checking in and whatever i don't need to see them like necessarily hitting the golf shots and stuff i like that but like i think it'd be cooler to like that's what we get to know, see on the weekends anyways yeah like see them mic'd up and see how they were talking before which i know the tour is starting to do during the live events yeah. like have them mic'd up like that's what i want to see i want to yeah. see the 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 stuff that isn't just you know them you know playing golf you yeah know? yeah so. Well, um, I think we're going to cut it. Yeah, let's do it. That um, was our full swing. That's what we wanted to cover. Full swing, episode three. Um, What are we going to talk about on the next one? I don't know. Um, We're going to golf today, so maybe we can kind of do a... Yeah, we're heading out to the Maybe course. Maybe we could go golf this. now and then go de- like a, a, what is that, debrief after yeah. our round. Talk yeah. about how bad. But it's going to be like 80 degrees down about. here, so that's going to be so nice. Yeah, yeah. Super uh, nice day. Gonna hit the hit the links, as they say. The links. Do those <laughs> qualify as links? I don't know. <laughs> They're on the water. So um definitely. but yeah. Appreciate everybody watching. Um episode three, it drops what, next Monday. Yeah. Yeah. So Episode one and two have done pretty good, so I'm happy with it. I appreciate everybody watching, yeah. liking it, subscribing, commenting. Um Put in the comments what y'all what y'all want us to talk about, you know, yeah. different things. And uh, like I said, check out the Benner Boys website. Snag you some merch. Yeah. Support the boys and support the mission. Peace. Peace.